star packed crowd to witness the opening date of its Pop Mart tour, better an Irish band's first world excursion in five years. The very technoid new album in the racks called Pop, U2 has returned to the scene in spectacular style with a giant, one of a kind LED video screen that brings the classic pop art paintings of such artists as Roy Lichtenstein and the late Keith Haring to life. And a thunderous new mono mix sound that harks back to the roaring concert sonics of the 1960s. Enough of the talk here now is U2 on stage in the open desert air of Las Vegas with an old one I will follow. soaking up the sonic innovations of dance and techno music and huddling with various remix wizards. And when we spoke to them shortly before the show, they had plenty to say. We put all the money into, as they say, put the money on the screen, or we put the money in the screen and um, and, and in the arch. And um, it does a lot of great stuff, so I'm not saying that that's in any way, uh, you know, a limitation. It's, it's so versatile and there's so many looks and so many powerful effects that can be created by the screen that, you know, I don't think we need anything else really. A lot of the stuff uh, on, the, on the album involves samples and stuff. How, how are you incorporating that into the show? Will there be little gnomes underneath the stage putting the samples in? Or are you doing it all yourself? You haven't got an auxiliary musician on stage. No, it doesn't feel right having a... Um it didn't feel right anyway for this tour to have an extra musician. But we have got uh, each toe, I think, uh, each of Edge's toes are, do are doing something quite important, I'm told. <laughs> I'm not only triggering samples, but also singing, um, changing guitar sounds. You know, there's a lot. I have you a lot on. paid any more than that. How annoying is I that? No, it's, uh, I have to look into that. <laughs> it's not really fair. You're always saying, well, you know, we're not really that good. That's why our sound is the way it is. But you've become really good over the years. I mean, you find, you find yourself... We weren't here last night. <laughs> it was not good at all. It, was, it wasn't good at all. It was really good. Back, We got this cold room back, backstage, which we've been, you know, playing in. Um, and it's really good back there. But we came out here, and we, it, was, it was the... The bad wedding band revisited, <laughs> unfortunately. You guys like show business, right? There's a di there's a maybe a reason why uh, for that. Uh, that's because that's where we came from. Yeah. <laughs> and I find that bands that are you know selling you their street level stuff usually aren't, aren't from the street. What we started with Zoo TV was just a reaction against what we just felt was a bit bogus for a lot of people that it was being marketed by record companies as authentic and um, um, you know we just we were trying to actually be a bit honest about our situation I mean we'd spent the 80s trying to pretend that we weren't in a big band and I just thought hold on you know we just thought here we are let's have some fun with this let's be let's let's you know let's let's be a little playful about this and um, and here we are is the show down pat you got everything nailed down nothing to worry about no not like that. no no it's not like that <laughs> um I, I think you know with this this is a brand new show it's gonna take a couple of weeks for it to settle in um, but it's gonna be fine you know it, it, it is still gonna be the greatest show on earth What is the show going to consist of besides the, the new album? You get, how did you how do you pick what stuff to bring back from the past? 
Uh, it's kind of difficult to, you know, we want to play the new records and we want to put some of the old songs in, but it's not a, you know, we don't want to pull out the greatest hits. So, uh, again, this is something that we're still going through. We haven't sorted that out. I'm not the only one. great to come out of a studio having worked with all the technology and created your record and you've got all this stuff going on and actually throw all that away and, and start from scratch and actually be a band again which is nice. A band again they are and we'll be joining Bono and company back on stage in just a moment and then we'll have a talk with new breed guitar star Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine, the opening act on the first nine dates of this tour plus lots more from Las Vegas when we return. Don't go away. Bono rocks. Bono rules, baby. <laughs> the stars come out tonight from Dublin's biggest little band. Welcome back to the Week in Rock. Coming to you from Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, where you two, back in action after a five-year hiatus, is setting some new standards in live concert sound and spectacle. Opening up on the first leg of this tour is the Los Angeles band Rage Against the Machine, a group noted for the 60-style revolutionary declamations of frontman Zach De La Rocha, and fueled by the machine gun guitar wrangling of Tom Morello. Big fan of you too. I've uh, been a fan for about 10 years. I, they won me over. When I first moved out to Los Angeles, I had this really horrible job. I was uh, um, a, a filing clerk. I alphabetized eight hours a day all by myself, and the, the bosses were very cruel, and I was super poor, making you know sub-minimum wage doing this, and I had one tape, and it was The Unforgettable Fire, and, uh, and it was Listening to that, you know, hours and hours, day after day, month after month, it really helped me get through that time and helped to, because uh, in, in that music there's so much, there's so much hope and so much passion that helped me transcend that mundane, you know, grim, crappy experience, and uh, and I've been a fan since then. Things that we were uh, insistent on was we got full use of the PA, which bands don't always get when you open up for a big band like you too. So, um, so all the sound will be there, though we won't have you know, the you know, 60 foot popcorn maker or whatever, <laughs> whatever else goes on. Uh, but, but, and, and it will be a brand new experience for us. <laughs> I think we're gonna rock the hits. You know, uh, we've, got, <laughs> we've got. You don't come out. You don't come out with some kind of arty, you know, kind of uh, Grateful Dead jamming set when you open for you too. You gotta kind of. You gotta kind of. Uh, kind of rock the hits. for this U2 tour are much more than the average, you know, 13 to $20 Rage Against the Machine uh, ticket. Uh, to that end, we're donating 100% of our profits from it to various activist organizations and charities. Um, and that way we, you know, use that money to redistribute the wealth in a way that is very constructive, and we get to play with a band that we really love. So, that works out. Wanted for tormenting guitar, Samarola of Rage Against the Machine, the opening act on the first nine dates of U2's Pop Mart tour. Speaking of which, let's go back on stage right now for a more you two live in Las Vegas, real thing. Okay. 
Plus more where that's coming from. Plus to talk with star producer Rizzo of the Wu-Tang Clan when we return. Welcome back to the Weekend Rock, coming to you from the balmy open air of Las Vegas, where U2 is launching a tour unlike any you're likely to have heard before, and certainly unlike any you've ever seen. Let's go back on stage right now for Do You Feel Love? to say that we thought about this really seriously and we, we worked really hard to get Las Vegas because we felt it would work in with the theme of the show. The reality is actually that um, there was no other stadium available. But it's worked out well. You 2 took Las Vegas by storm with a show that set new standards of glitz and techno dazzle. And a two hour set that wove together new tunes off their pop album with road tested oldies from the back catalog. couple of older songs. Um, the idea, I suppose, would be to try and rework them and try and find some kind of a new angle. And we'll just see, you know. With four million watts of power at their disposal and a one-of-a-kind stage-long video screen, the band lit up the Las Vegas night. Now, what is the story behind this screen here? It's an amazing, is this like cutting edge technology? Is that what's going on here? I've never seen anything quite like it. They said it was possible. So we said, okay, let's, let's make one as big as we can. And I think the technology of, of making the quality of picture as good as this yeah. is only recently available. But it's, it's quite a thing. I yeah. think it's going to be the future. Is it hard to travel with all this? This seems like a very delicate setup. I mean, it's hard to yeah. pack it up and move it I to know. another place it's and set it back up. a bit worry, to be honest, because we haven't actually done that yet. <laughs> so if... If at the next show, it's uh, people see us just on stage and there's a few lights and we'll know it's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> this arch here, which is uh, a lot of people are talking about, is really... Not a McDonald's-esque arch at all, I don't think. <laughs> Certainly not. Split <laughs> St. Louis or something. <laughs> but the, 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 uh, this is designed to hold the PA. Every gig you've ever been to in your whole life outdoors, you would see to the left and to the right of that arch, you'd see a, a huge column of speakers, you know, and we wanted rid of that, so we had to build something that would hang it, and it's in mono, and that's the cool. Mono is in mono. It's everything to be. Vegas is. They always want to make something special for the people and make a big commotion. That's exactly what they did tonight. They came out, they did what they had to do, and they blew everyone away. You know, we're part of something. You know, we're part of a line of bands, you know, the Beatles, the Stones, whatever. We dare to believe that we're part of that line. And they're 
and we are part also of another tradition of, of artists that came out, you know, at, that, at the same time and wanted to connect with the mainstream.